Six-year-old Cree Miller is like most kids, full of energy, has a few tricks up his sleeve, and gives powerful high fives. <laughs> There's one thing that bothers him. Sometimes pe I see people like d do different stuff when they walk, and I feel like that I wish I could do that. That was taken away from Cree. Experts testified his biological parents, teenagers at the time, dropped him on his head as an infant. And I didn't know if I could take this on. It was then in 2011 that Don Miller took him in as a foster child. A year later, she adopted him, naming him Cree, a Native American word for warrior. I lift him into the bathtub, lift him onto the toilet. He's not independent in any of those ways. A lawsuit filed by Cree and his adoptive mother claims in 2011 when he first arrived at Sutter Amador Hospital in Jackson, the medical staff should have reported his injuries to Child Protective Services. Chris Keen is their attorney. In this case, there were nursing notes that he had bruising on his face. There was a history of blood in his mouth, injury to his eye. Three weeks later, he returned, this time paralyzed from his injuries. Injuries the lawsuit says were either caused or contributed to by his biological family. They are also defendants in this case, and it's $8.4 million verdict. Sutter Health now apologizes for its role. We are very sorry for what Cree and Miller family has experienced. This case offers us the opportunity for analysis and to learn as much as we can about how to improve. The money is intended to pay for Cree's pain and suffering and future lost earnings. I've encouraged him to be the best that he can be and try to be as independent because that's what's going to make him strong. With a dream of walking someday, it's a boost for this warrior in his lifelong battle.